Dr. Kalpita. Am I audible? Uh, you are. Uh, I'd like to uh, just briefly introduce Dr. Kalpita, who's again, uh, you know, ex, ex alumni from PGI and is presently uh, associate consultant at the Shankar Netrale Kolkata and does vitro retina as well as ocular oncology. And let's see what she has to tell us in a great masquerade case. Kalpita, please. Thank you, Dr. Mohit, and uh, thank you for the opportunity, Dr. Raman sir, Dr. Mohit, and Sumer. Uh, my case is a 51-year-old gentleman who presented with decrease of vision in the right eye for uh, last five months. He was a known diabetic for the last 20 years, which, uh, which was under well control. And before presentation to us, he was diagnosed as uh, ECV elsewhere and received four injections of anti vagif in the right eye. This is the fundus photograph of the patient. Uh, on presentation, his best corrected visual acuity in the right eye was 618 and 24, and the left eye was 66 and 6. Anterior segment was uh, within normal limit with uh, uh, quite AC, and uh, on slit lamp examination, there was no anterior vitreous face cells also. So, uh, vitreous shows that, that he had asteroid hyalosis in both the eyes, and in the fundus photo, we can see the media was hazy due to, and we can see under there, there was some amount of pre retinal heme in the right eye, and uh, of the uh, uh, macula was not very well visible. Right eye, uh, left eye also had uh, some RP effect, uh, just inferior to the disc. There were no other significant findings. So, Keeping in mind the diagnosis elsewhere as PCV, we advised uh, FFA ICG for the patient, but due to presence of uh, this, uh, there was presence of block fluorescence all through the uh, phases of the FFA ICG in the right eye. So the details of uh, macula was obscured, but in the OCT we can see there was presence of hemorrhagic uh, PED corresponding to the area of the preretinal hemorrhage with presence of uh, double membrane sign, which was suggestive of IPCV. Uh, and uh, with the peripheral examination, he had some NPDR changes also. In the left eye, uh, he had this uh, inferior to the disc, he had presence of uh, one small drusenoid PED. Uh, there were no other significant findings. OCT angiograph, the right eye showed a uh, presence of neovascular membrane corresponding to the area of the PED. In the left eye, however, there was no flow in the area of the lesion. So we gave the provisional diagnosis as PCV with BVN under the macula with breakthrough vitreous hemorrhage right eye and uh, advised one injection of anti vagif in the right eye. We uh, decided to observe the left eye uh, for that time. Uh, subsequent follow-up, uh, we could see that the size of the PED was reduced to some extent and vitreous hemorrhage was clearing. However, due to the fluctuating nature of the vit uh, vitreous hemorrhage, his vision ranged uh, from 618 to 69 in uh, subsequent four visits. After that, uh, patient was lost to follow up for six months. So after six months, when he comes back to us, he brings all the papers where he was diagnosed with a musical lymphoma and received six cycles of chemotherapy. And now when we do the fundus photography, we see, and clinically also we could see that the vitreous hemorrhage has completely cleared. And we can see a well demarcated area of RP atrophy in the right eye, as well as development of a new area of RP atrophy along the inferior temporal arcade. Which was uh, in uh, autofluorescence, we can see the area of RP atrophy more prominent. So, uh, so we advised FFA ICG in this visit also, and which showed as a typical uh, pattern of leopard skin appearance corresponding to the area of the RP atrophy, which was more prominent in the late phase. However, if we see carefully at the macula, there was a presence of a choroidal neovascular membrane also, and presence of we can see the uh, presence of a very big network of BVN at the macula in ICG in the late phase. At the same time, patient developed PDR changes in the uh, PDR changes in the right eye also. However, left eye he maintained the NPDR changes with no other significant findings. So when we do the OCT angiography through the lesion, we could see the well demarcated mature vessels suggestive of a most probably a scarred choroidal neovascular membrane. Left eye we could not make out any neovascular changes. With so now uh, the dilemma was, what is the diagnosis for this patient? Is it PCV? 
because uh, we kept the diagnosis of PCV because the reason of the breakthrough vitreous assemblage and the characteristics membrane seen in OCT or OCTA, the macula, which was supported by FFICG also, and absence of uh, any vitritis. The diagnosis of lymphoma we kept in mind because of the shape of the PET, because the shape of the PET was little irregular when we looked the scans effectively and the, there was elevation of the RP was also a little irregular. There was no presence of fluid throughout uh, his all follow-ups uh, what we had and he had a very good response to the chemotherapy. I forgot to mention that time his vision uh, came to 6, 9 and 6 and uh, we could see the characteristic F uh, fluorescence and FFA findings post chemotherapy. So this patient completed six cycles of chemotherapy and after completion of six cycles of chemotherapy, there were, were no active or residual lesions in the PET CT, but uh, the membrane under the phobia was kept under observation as there was no presence of uh, hemorrhage or fluid. And uh, for the year, he received three sittings of PRP in the right eye. This is a sequence follow-up. His uh, right eye vision, he maintained at 6, 9 and 6, left eye, he was 6, 7.5 and 6, and the lesions remained stable which is uh, more prominent in the uh, OCTA. So I want to discuss uh, to the panelists regarding this case, whether this is a case of this, uh, lymphoma, like PCV, which was masquerading a lymphoma, or these are two different disease entities simultaneously, or if it is a lymphoma lesion, based on the OCT images, was it possible to predict lymphoma lesions at presentation? Uh, I want to uh, uh, put uh, share my acknowledgement uh, to Dr. Muna Fendi and Dr. Pukrajishi who helped me diagnosis in this case. Thank you very much. Great presentation, Kalpita. Great case, great case. Uh, we'll be coming to this. I'll, uh, uh, I'm just going to uh, uh, you know, have a minor change. So doctor, I'm just going to request Dr. Diksha to present her case. And we'll have discussion, Kalpita, on your case and ma'am's case together, please, if it's OK. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the panelists for uh, you know, uh, permitting us to do that.